All right, I got a training video today on uh, the new style GSX pin setter setting tongs. Uh, we have an issue here. I uh, Just to let you know, I got a whole set of tongs to tighten up. This is going to help you if you're having a lot of pin drops. Uh, we had, uh, I was going through and cleaning our lanes last week, and I took all these tongs out. These are out of one specific lane, and when I took them out, I noticed that we had uh, oversized dampers in there. You got your uh, regular size dampers and your oversized. So uh, when I took it out, I noticed that I cleaned it and it worked for a while, but then it started to break down and I know what the issue is. I knew it was going to happen. And this is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you. I'm going to get all these out of the way. All right, uh, with these uh, tongs, just to let you know, the dampers, as you can notice, on the left side of the screen, I have put the wider side of these dampers down and it comes narrower over here. That is very important when you install these dampers in. Uh, the wider side of the damper needs to be to the outside tip, the outside connection point of these tongs. So the wide side is out here. Put your narrow side to the back. All right, uh, now the oversized dampers, yes, they do help out, but in the long term, they do more damage then they save in the short term for picking up pins. If your pin setters are dropping pins, I'd recommend you dedicate a little time to your mechanics actually going back there and repairing them. Don't just let anybody just slam the dampers up in there and say it's a fix. The reason that is is because the timing on the table still runs at the same rotations and closes the tongs the same way each and every time. But whenever you put the oversized damper in, I'm going to throw it in real quick here. Let's pop this one out. Wide end out here at the front. And you'd always put it on, the, if you use the oversized damper, it goes on, when the tong is installed, it needs to go on to the 10 pin side of the arms. I'm not for certain saying this is the 10 pin side I'm just putting it in just to show you guys for a display okay so now that I've got this oversized damper in you can see how what how so much more room is taken up in this area of the space where the pin neck is gone in as I said since the table still rotates as far as it does every time yes it will grip the pins harder in the middle and hold them but at the same time you're putting more stress on all your joints that link this spotting tong style together so in the long run, you're going to start breaking this system down faster, and you're going to have to either replace them or repair them or tune them up. I'm going to get ready to show you here how I tune all these tongs up, and because what it is with that damper in there, once I took it out and I cleaned all the dampers and put regular size dampers in, it, it worked fine, but then within a week, they all started dropping, and that's because I'm going to take this uh, hold plate out. There is now so much slop in each one of these joints everywhere where there's a press nut there's one two three on this side and then i've got one more on the back side everywhere there's a press nut all that ex added extra stress has made them made them loose see all that wobble i hope you can pick up all the what there shouldn't be that much wobble in there when you add like uh i may be over over phrasing it but when you add a sixteenth of play here and a sixteenth of play there and a sixteenth of play on that press nut and another sixteenth and that all transfers all the way down to the end of the tongs you get a lot more slop out here so I'm going to set you up I'm going to show you how to try to fix that slop out of this tong to tune it up to where it can work a little bit longer alright so uh, I've got a vice here it's not my best vice. I got two facilities I work at. Uh, this one's got a lot of play in it. I wish I was at the other facility. It's a better vice. Nevertheless, uh, you take a 5 16 socket. Uh, I prefer a 12 point. Unfortunately, I am working with a 6 point today. Uh, like I said, I'm at another facility. I don't have all my tools here. I got a, a, a larger selection of tools there. So I'm going to use a 6 point and I'm going to take the 6 point and I'm going to put it. And uh, the reason I use 5 16 I know this is all metric system. Is it just it just seems to fit so snugly right over top of that plastic 
that plastic attachment that's coming out of there where I'm going to put this press nut on there. Now you got to watch whenever you press down in the vise, don't press it down totally flat. You want to press it snug, and we're going to bring it out, and I'm going to show you how to test the play in it, because if you press it too tight, it, it will bind up the system, and I'm letting you know that now. There is a way, if you do press it too tight, we'll just do a little bit of tweaking and wiggling, and it should bring it out. So I'm going to go ahead and take the nut, put it on, crank this open a little bit more, put it right over top of the press nut, put the tong into the vise, crank it down, And this will come after a little bit of experience and doing it over and over again. So that's the first one I'm going to do. Now I'm going to do my second one here. You do enough of them, you'll learn how much you need to press them to tighten it up, but not over tighten it. I'm going to do the one on the, the gear wheel here as well. So I'm doing the three that are all facing the one side first. You can do it in any order you please, just whatever you do. Just don't forget the order you do it in because you want to do every one. And we're going to do the last one on the opposite side here. All right. So now you want to make sure that each one moves but doesn't bind. You'd like to, what I kind of do is I, I kind of hold it and I'll just let it drop. And if it drops, and it's still snug here when I'm, I'm wiggling up and down. I'm just, let me get away from the camera a little. I am wiggling up and down to kind of get a feeling of how much tension is in each joint. I, te I test the middle one here. I test this last one on the arm. I even test out the wheel, this gear wheel. And it feels a little bit loose. I'm going to try and give it a little bit more of a press. Okay, I like that a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to bring you back over, and I'm going to put you over top of the, the white area so it's easier to see. And I'm going to show you the difference between one that I haven't pressed yet and this one. All right, get everything out of the way, make it easier to see here. Okay, so I've got an old set here, and you can see, I'm trying trying to get line you up there, trying to show you how much play and wiggle I have in all those joints now. Now here's the set that we just did. Tamed it down a lot more, you know, but you, like I said, you still have to have freedom of movement within these press nuts. Don't press it so tight that it doesn't flex. Here's another piece of advice. Every time you press these nuts, you end up getting a half-life out of it. So uh, we had this in the facility. We had these in since uh 2012 it's now 2015 we're starting to get some we had them in in, in uh, april of 2012 was when we opened now it's july of 2015 and we're really getting issues on this one mainly because it had the oversized dampers in it okay but nevertheless so let's just say for on average it lasted us two years all right uh once you press it the next time it'll break down is probably going to be within an, one year if you press it again, the next time it's going to break down is probably going to be within six months. You press it again, three months. That's the half-life you do every time you press these nuts on the end. I'm going to be coming up uh, soon with a video that uh, hopefully will amaze everybody, and it will help a lot of mechanics out, and uh, be looking forward to that.